In this tutorial, you're going to see how we use Presto to transform this green screen into this web page in only 10 minutes. You'll see every step it took to reposition the fields, to put everything in containers, to add an image of the item, as well as a drop down box over database file, as well as an autocomplete to speed up data entry. Now let's get started. I have the Presto Designer open and I've already navigated to the page that we're going to enhance. Presto gives you an excellent starting point. Right when you install it, it automatically transforms your green screens into a web page. There's no need to change any of the source or to recompile. And in almost all cases, there's no need to manually set screen identifiers. It also applies some styling automatically for you. For example, it automatically detected all the function keys and transformed them into these nice side menus. It also did the same with the page title and added a nice more web looking font to it. Now nothing screams green screen such as these dot dot dots. You'd really never see that in a web application. There's a couple of ways to change that. One is to do it at the global level or at the page level, which is what I'll show you now. Going into the page customizations, you can go to the page options. And there's a lot of options here, but the one that we're looking at is the auto formatting. And as soon as we change this from none to left, you'll notice that the dots go away. Now we're going to do some more cleanup on the screen. Um, you know, this is the program name again. You don't really see this on regular web pages. It's more of a, an IBM I green screen legacy type thing. I'm just going to hit the delete button to get rid of that. Uh, I also don't need to see my name in here. I'll hit delete there. You can also drag any text or fields around. Just click on it, move it up to the top right. Uh, type information, press enter. Again, another classic uh, green screen uh, design, which we don't need on the web application. We have a nice submit button down on the left here, and people tend to know enter can also be used to submit. So just hit the delete button again. Now the next thing we're going to do is move some elements around. We're going to move all this other stuff up. Really nice feature in Presto is the abil ability to move things as a group. So we'll take these ones here, the first four fields, and just like that, it selects all the elements. I could use my mouse to drag it up, or I can hit shift and the up arrow, and it'll do it five spaces at a time. So nice and simple to do that. We are going to end up replacing the uh, lookup with a drop down box. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the, that button right now. Another thing is this uh, item short description. Um, we're just going to edit the text. So you can also do some inline text editing. Just clicking on there, I'll get rid of the word short. It'll give us a little bit of extra room as well. I'll do another group move here. Again, using the shift and the left arrow this time to move everything over. And this field is pretty long. So what I'm gonna do with the uh, description, I'm gonna move it down to below here. And what you'll notice, it'll snap into place and it'll line up directly with everything above it. That happened automatically. And the other thing that we want to do to this is we want to transform this into a text area. So you can click on any field in Presto and you can transform it. Uh, we're going to look at some of these other options such as autocompletes later or date pickers. But in this case here, we're going to go down to the text area. I select that and I'm going to just make it a little bit bigger, just like that. So I made it big enough so that it got rid of the scroll bar and it did the automatic text wrapping. Now to add a little bit more visual appeal and to group data together, we're going to go and put this top part in a container. To do that, we need to add a new UI element or a widget, and you do that by going up to the palette. And within the palette, we have containers. So I'm just going to click on that to hold it in place. Now we're going to go to a, a gradient container. So we're going to go ahead and pull that in, put it right up here. You just simply drag the corner, and we leave a little bit of space because we're going to end up going to put an image up on the right here later on. The other thing that we want to do is grab a nether palette item, and that's to grab the title for the container. So we're just going to drag that up to here and just overlay it a little bit. And I'll just eyeball the accuracy. You could always change the height and the width of each element uh, within the properties, the element properties up here as well. Now what we need to do is uh, go add a title to the container. So we'll do that by going into the text here. So again, we're in the element properties. I'm just going to call this one item description. And we'll go ahead and hit save. Now, the other thing you might notice is this bottom element has a bit of a grayed out look. That's because it went on top of the other field. So just by clicking on there, we now go to the layer and we can select minus one. 
and that will put it behind the input fields now. I'm now going to do the same type of styling and field moving as the upper section. I'll do it to the bottom here, but I'm actually going to fast forward the video so you don't have to sit through uh, the same type of content again. We'll now add some visual display by adding an image of the items. To do that, again, we go to the palette. We'll drag an image in. And that's just a placeholder image there. We'll resize it. And in this case, again, we don't want a static image. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the element properties. And we're going to go to the image source. And in here, we're going to specify the directory. And this happens to be the directory on the IFS of where all of our images are stored. Now each of the images, the name of the image is actually on the screen down here. And that means that we want to have this as a dynamic value so that it displays a different image when you're on a different item. The easiest way to do this now is to actually go to the green screen tab. If you don't see that tab, you can always go to view and then green screen to select it. By bringing up the green screen view, we can now select the area of the original underlying green screen where the image URL or the image name resides. We can then simply select it and then drag it over here and place it in the source location. And now you see that the image has appeared. The other thing that you might want to do is you want to put the word trim here as the last parameter in case your image names are varying length. This is also very handy if you're linking to things like PDF or invoices uh, that reside uh, on your IFS or on any other web accessible location. When we were moving fields around earlier on, we removed the F4 lookup, and that's because we had planned on transforming the inventory category to a drop down box. So to do that, we're just going to simply right click on the field and transform it to a drop down list. Within the drop down list, you have a few options. You can put a static list of values. I'm just going to expand this a little bit. So you can put a static list of values uh, as your options, but we want to do this off of a, a DB2 file and populate it from there. So looking at the SQL query tool, which is built right into Presto, I'm going to click on this options here. And I've actually already created an SQL query before that I'd like to reuse. So I'm going to go here and select an existing query. So here's an SQL statement, and you have the full flexibility on coding any SQL that you want. And we're going to select that. The one thing to point out here is in this case we are specifying the library name. However, that can be dynamic based on a user's library list as well. So just by selecting the SQL statement, we hit OK. And now as we save the changes, to see these at runtime, I'm just going to toggle so that we can go to the active page instead of the visual editor so you can actually see how this will work at runtime. And then as we select the drop down, we can see all of our values. Our last step is going to be to go to add an autocomplete to the category group now. Another great way to improve data entry input. Go back to the visual editor and once again we're going to select the field we want to transform and this time we're going to pick an autocomplete. And similar to the drop down box, the data source option is a SQL query. We'll go there and once again I have an SQL statement that is already ready. That is for the item group. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that. Now one of the differences you'll notice uh, with this SQL query compared to the last one is there's a parameter where the group has a like for a variable. So that when people are typing into the input, it is searching on the characters that they've typed in. That's why there's no value down here for the actual parameter. What we're going to do here is go into the property again and the term so we're giving it a name of group. So that means as they type into this field, that's the values that's being passed back to the SQL statement. The other thing that we need to do for an autocomplete is specify how many characters do we want to let people type before it runs the query to select a list of values. In this case, we have a pretty small database. I'm just going to go with the value of one. Um, but if you have a, a lot of values uh, that you think it might be uh, more processor intensive, you might want to make that two or three characters that they have to type in. It also makes a difference on how well they know the data. So just like that, 
we'll save our changes and once again we're going to have to go back to the active page to see this at runtime and how it works. We now go into this field and as we select uh, or as we start typing we get a list of values that match that. We now have a great autocomplete. So that brings us to the end of this video tutorial on how quickly in under 10 minutes we did all of these transformations from moving fields to the containers, adding a dynamic image, as well as better data entry with drop downs and autocompletes. Please contact us if you have any questions or would like to start your trial today.